say, you know, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. And they have hewn out cisterns, but they are broken cisterns, cisterns that can hold no water. Now what God is saying is that they have forsaken me, true source of life, fountain of living water, their belief in God, and they created religious systems, cisterns. But Jesus, or the Lord said, they can hold no water. Up on the Mount of Olives, just below the International Hotel, coming down the path towards the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, just uh, near the top of uh, the um, Mount of Olives there, down the first flight of stairs, uh, there's a little sign that says, um, Tomb of the Prophets. Now, I'm sure there are no prophets that were buried there, but uh, this fellow who owns a property figured to make a prophet out of it, and so he puts up the sign, and for a few shekels, you can go into the Tomb of the Prophets. Uh, but the interesting thing is, it was originally intended to be a cistern. Uh, if you go up on the top, you'll see how they made all of these little grooves uh, when the rains would come to direct the water on into this hole at the top, and it would fill up the cistern, and that's how they kept, it was sort of a reservoir of water, and that's, they're all over the country there. And, and you can see this uh, Cistern, you, you can see that it was a cistern, it's very obvious. Uh, but of course, uh, some fellow, it's a pretty good sized one, so some fellow spent an awful lot of time uh, with a chisel and all, uh, pounding out and digging out this cistern uh, in order to, uh, you know, water his garden and uh, living there on the side of the Mount of Olives. Well, he got it all finished, and uh, he uh, was waiting for the rains, evidently, and when the rains came and he saw the water coming down the little uh, grooves that he had made in the rocks and filling up the cistern, I'm sure he was happy. Uh, but when he dropped the bucket down to get the water, he heard this empty clang. Uh, evidently, there was a fissure in the uh, rock and so the water all disappeared. So uh, uh, very uh, inventive. They, they did make a, a, a tomb out of it, a place to bury the dead. A lot of little niches where people were buried, but uh, it wasn't intended for that purpose. Sort of, God said, they have hewn out cisterns. The false religious systems he said, but they're broken cisterns. They can't hold water. And you get a good uh, uh, idea of it as you look at the broken cistern that didn't hold water. And so what did it become? A place to bury the dead. What happens when you follow false religions? Hey, it's a place to bury the dead. And broken cisterns, cisterns that can hold no water. So, verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The beautiful promise. We read in Isaiah 2, 8, He raises up the poor, out of the dust. He lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Romans 8.15, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You've received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, 
heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that you suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God. He shall be my son. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doesn't yet appear what we're going to be, but we know that when he appears, we're going to be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Peter said in his first letter, chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and fades not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith. John wrote, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, Therefore the world knows us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. So uh, here, as the Lord is revealing to John, he that overcomes will inherit all things. Come ye blessed of the Father, Jesus said. Inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you. Heir of all things. How glorious. Son of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs through Jesus Christ. Verse 8, but the fearful, in contrast, now the overcomers, on the other side there's the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars. They will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Jesus said in Luke 12, 4, I say unto you, my friends, don't be afraid of those that can kill your body, and after that they have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you, whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he has killed the body has the power to cast it into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived, Paul said. These people are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Paul wrote to the Galatians, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of which I have told you before, as I also tell you now, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Christ. Writing to the Ephesians, Paul said, For you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things, the wrath of God is coming on the children of disobedience. So, uh, those that are fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murders, and so forth, 
uh, they will have their part, it says, in the lake which burns with fire.